What's up guys, welcome back to Introduction to Programming using Solidity and the Ethereum Virtual Machine. Today I want to go over variables and there's two types of variables that we're going to cover. One is called value types and the other one is called reference type. In this particular lecture I'm going to go over just the structure of memory and your EVM when you execute a contract and then I'll go over value types for variables and then in the next video I'll go over reference types. How does an EVM memory architecture look like? Well the EVM memory architecture looks exactly the way that you're seeing it here. You're gonna have three sections of memory one is called storage the other one is called memory and then you have a stack and what are these for well storage is used for anything that you want to have persist in the ethereum virtual machine an example of that would be if you want to store any balances for people in your contract you may have users that have tokens and you want to keep track of their balances throughout the whole life cycle of your contract then you may want to store data in storage memory memory would be anywhere that you want to store things temporarily for example if you're gonna do some type of computation and you want to save the results somewhere for later use but you know that you're not gonna need to persist it in storage then you would use memory if you want to store any variables that are just gonna be used temporarily similar also you're gonna use uh, memory and then the stack is what actually gets pushed data gets pushed into the stack anytime that there is a run time of your application for example if you have a contract and you have a couple of functions the first thing that happens is they're gonna get pushed on the stack w in terms of execution so what's gonna happen is it's similar to a system such as your PC where PC is gonna stand for program counter and if you've studied the fundamentals of computer science you know that you have a program counter you have CPU memory and then you have RAM and then you also have cache but in your CPU memory you're gonna hold temporary instructions here you have a program counter so every time you execute some type of contract your program counter is gonna increment by one and then you're gonna have data push into the stack and you're gonna have data be saved in memory or storage and as your as the execution unwinds and you start executing more and more functions then your stack will get pushed on more instructions and memory will also have some play in there in terms of program execution simple program execution means that you're gonna have always a program counter which is always gonna increment by one and once you have your program counter incremented by one then your functions and applications are gonna get pushed on the stack and then after the stack you're gonna have memory which is gonna save data temporarily and then you're gonna have storage that's gonna save data permanently when when you write your contracts you have to keep this in mind because anything that you save in storage is gonna cost a lot more gas than what you save in memory in your EVM because remember you gotta have all the nodes copy make a copy of anything that you do in storage because it's permanent it's written to the blockchain just keep in mind this architecture when you're writing your smart contract and we'll go into this more as the course evolves so now that you know all the different areas of memory that the EVM provides for you let's talk about variables that are considered value types in the world of solidity in the world of solidity you have a variable type of bool, uint, int, 
you also have something that you've never seen before which is address by 32 and string and enum enums are your own uh, user defined types that you can use which are just base type integer so bool is con so these all these data types are all considered value types well, what is the difference between a value type and a reference type well a value type will get a copy when it's passed along through functions for example if I call a function we'll get into functions in, in a later time but when we talk about calling a function then anything that is considered a value type will always make a copy of that variable in order to read uh, from that variable whereas a reference type variable the address will get passed along and there is no copy made you're gonna you're just gonna get the address of it uh, in your function now if we take a look at the value types that we've listed here bool will provide you with a true or false value uint stands for unsigned integer max size of it will be 256 bits so whatever number unsigned integer that you can fit the maximum number you can fit in a 256 bit memory space that it will be your max number and when you have uint uh, it's similar to saying uint 256 so you can indicate what size you want to have your uint value so for example I can declare uint32 and that's perfectly fine so what I'm telling Solidity is that I can store a 32-bit number in this variable called u underscore my number then we also have an int and when you deal with ints that means you're dealing with signed numbers you're dealing with signed numbers and you still have a max max size of 256 except now you have a, a, a broader a smaller range because you're going from negative to positive next variable which is value type it's always passed by value is called an address and the address will keep a wallet account address in in the variable when we talk about accounts in solidity this is where you will you can keep the address of the account so for example in this particular case in my test account that I'm using and using this uh, remix browser which is a temporary browser we'll be using and executing our temporary contracts I have many addresses available to me so sometimes you may need to figure out if the address that's coming in is the address of a particular account or the address of a particular uh, owner of the actually person releasing the the contract itself okay so we'll we'll touch base we'll touch into that as to how that works then you have a data type called byte which will get you the it's similar to any other programming language and if you haven't had any programming experience you have a byte which is 8 bits so for 32 bytes okay, that means you have 32 blocks of memory available to you it's similar to an, an array each uh, each length of one byte okay and then you have a string which is a you can store any type of uh, string literal here and the string is considered a value type and it's also considered a dynamic type because that means that your string can change in length it varies in size it varies in size so you 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 can have a string length of 5 or you can have a string length of 10 it really doesn't matter uh, you're, it's, it's a dynamic type and these are complicated uh, in terms of when we're writing functions you're not going to be able to return this directly you're going to have to use a byte because of the way that a string is which is dynamic you're, you don't have a fixed length 
uh, as a as a byte. Uh, so we have to be careful with that. Uh, and then you have enums again, value types which are passed by value, where you can declare an enum. So here I've declared an enum of called my choice, uh, and in this enum I have four particular values: move left, move right, move straight, stay still. And the way that Solidity treats them is as integers, and it'll be 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so the value will be 0, 1, 2, 3. And if I declare an enum variable, I would use, I would declare it this way, my choice current. And now current has the, the each individual property available to it. So I could say current, then move left, then move right. Now I can't do any assignments in my contract outside of functions it's not allowed these are called state variables so what you would have to do is you would have to create something called a constructor and we'll get into that uh, in, uh, in later lectures where when you call a constructor is where you it instantiates your contract for the first time and then you can initialize your variables so you can't do any initializations globally here okay globally here okay so those are examples of value types and in the next lecture I'll go over reference types and we'll touch a little bit about functions so I hope you enjoyed the first video in your journey into solidity programming and contract development if you would be so kind if you like the video please give me a like if you have any questions you can always contact me at www.parttimeadjunct.com send me an email at parttimeadjunct@gmail.com. thanks i'll see you in the next video